From the Toronto Star, I'm Rudy Mudder, and this matters. COVID cases in children are surging in many places in the U.S. And as a parent, how concerned should we be that something like that could happen here? This time of year, back to school is usually music to most parents' ears. But heading into the third school year of dealing with COVID, with the Delta variant spreading quickly and the fourth wave taking off, this feels like a recipe for disaster, or at least another interrupted school year. With kids under 12 remaining the largest cohort who still cannot receive vaccines, experts predict there will be a rise in cases once classes resume. But with one of the highest vaccination rates in the world and other precautions, can we keep our kids healthy and safe? Dr. Karina Top is a pediatrician, vaccine researcher, and an associate professor at Dalhousie. She was previously on the show to talk about COVID and kids, and joins us once again to help share the most up-to-date information. Dr. Top, thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, so Dr. Top, you know I'm a parent, and the thing that is worrying me right now is watching the U.S. and particularly the southern states. They are seeing this large surge in cases in kids and hospitalizations. Let's talk about this. This is Delta and a still large population that remains unvaccinated, right? That's what's occurring here. Yeah. So the situation in the states is somewhat different from Canada. I think in the states that are seeing the highest surges, they have very, very low vaccine coverage. So we're talking well under half of adults have had even one dose, let alone two doses, and even lower uptake among teenagers, so the 12 to 18 year age group. And so we're seeing Delta is spreading like wildfire down there. We know it's a very, very contagious virus. It's more contagious than the Alpha variant, which came out of the UK and caused our third wave, and that, and even more contagious than the original COVID virus. So what we're seeing is really likely a large number of cases where there are probably many more mild and asymptomatic cases than what's actually reported in official numbers. And given that high number of cases, we're seeing more kids than in previous waves ending up being very sick and in hospital. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the virus is more severe for the individual. It, what we think is happening is just that there's much more spread than we'd seen previously, and you know, parents and other adults spreading it to young kids because the parents and adults themselves have not been vaccinated. Okay, so we have much higher rates of vaccinations here. But you know, schools are about to start. Are we going to see something similar? Or you know, I think people should expect maybe a rise in cases. But I mean, what do you sort of expect to happen as the school year opens up? Yeah. So what happens in schools really has all along has mirrored what's going on in the community in terms of COVID transmission. So across Canada right now, we're starting to see signs of increasing numbers of cases, and that's again because we have this very contagious. Form of the virus, the Delta variant, and not everyone is vaccinated. Though we do have much, much higher coverage than in the U.S. and actually among the highest in the world, which we can be really proud of. So, as people do go inside more in the colder weather, it's possible that we may see more cases. But what we are really going to be looking to see is what happens with hospitalizations and severe cases of COVID. So we do know that people who've had the vaccine, even two doses, can still get infected with Delta, but they're very mild cases, and the chance of ending up in hospital is far lower than people who are not vaccinated. So those are the numbers we'll be watching. And as long as you know everyone 12 and over who can get the vaccine gets vaccinated, that will help protect our children. You might have already mentioned this a little bit, but I've seen some conflicting reports about this. Are kids getting sicker? Do we know that right now, or is basically Delta sort of the same? Because the reporting all along has been that you know kids don't get as sick from it as adults, right? Yeah, we don't have clear signs that kids are getting sicker with Delta than with previous versions of COVID. But what we think we're seeing is that just more cases overall means that small percentage of kids who get sick. Represents is a bigger number of people just because we have more spread. So you know, for schools, 
what that means is, you know, we'll need to be watching what's going on in the community, how much transmission of COVID there is in the community, and thinking about whether, you know, masks are needed for indoors as a way to help protect kids, as well as, of course, you know, frequent hand washing and staying within social bubbles or cohorts at school, I think what is also going to be important to help keep schools safe. But those are all things that we need to be closely following to see how things go. The other thing that I'm reading about is potentially long COVID in kids. What do we know about that? And I mean, I think it probably goes along with your last point with more kids are getting it. We're probably going to see more of that as well, right? Yeah, so we're still learning about long COVID, but it was a recent study out that showed that it's uncommon in kids. So it does seem to be less common in kids than in adults. You know, only a small percentage of kids still had symptoms eight weeks after they'd been diagnosed with COVID. So that's encouraging news. And again, whether your chances of developing long COVID and how serious or severe that is does seem to correlate to some extent with how sick you were with your COVID infection. And so where most kids have very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all with COVID, that may explain why there's fewer cases of long COVID in kids. But, you know, if we do see higher cases in kids, and actually in Canada, we're not seeing, you know, higher rates of severe cases in kids right now, then, you know, if that changes, then we may see more long COVID in kids. But so far, it's not as much of a problem as in adults, which is encouraging. Okay. So now the big question that everybody wants to talk about, vaccination. What is the latest information that we have on children under 12? Are we still waiting on the studies to sort of finalize and to figure out dosage? Where are things at? Yeah, so those studies are still ongoing in children as young as six months of age up to 11 years of age, and they've been testing different doses in those kids. It does sound like we may have results in September on at least the five to 11 year age group. So those younger school age kids and then, you know, Health Canada will need to review that and our National Advisory Committee on Immunization will also need to review the data and then make recommendations for use of those vaccines if they're authorized by Health Canada. But I think we're hopeful that vaccines may be available for kids this fall, at least down to five years of age. And so that's the kids that are you know, out in school. And then the youngest kids, it may be closer to winter. But again, if we can get you know five to 11 year olds vaccinated, that's another chunk of the population that would be protected. And again, decrease the chance that we would be of the youngest age groups getting infected. We'll be right back. What about older kids, 12 and up? I mean, it looks like vaccine uptake is going pretty well with them. Have we seen anything interesting with that age group in terms of reactions or just in terms of vaccination rates? Yeah, no, in Canada, we've had really high vaccine coverage, uptake of vaccination in teens and 12 to 18 year olds, you know, well over 70%, I believe it kind of varies across the country, but it's really high, which is great. Obviously, their lives have been affected a lot by COVID in terms of their social activities and everything. And so it's great to see that uptake. And obviously, we'd like to get as many kids as possible to have both their doses before school starts, as well as for students starting universities and colleges, especially those living in residence. It's really critical that they get their vaccines as well. The Atlantic just wrote a big piece calling for basically just to start vaccinating kids right now, despite the fact that these studies are not really done. What do you think about that? Yeah, so in Canada, we're not seeing increasing rates of COVID in young kids, or at least not higher rates of severe cases. So the benefit to them of getting vaccine before we have any data on the vaccines in that age group is much less than perhaps other places like the southern U.S. where COVID spreading. But, you know, the studies are actually looking at different doses in younger kids. And so we don't currently have, you know, access to those smaller doses. And we don't know, you know, even the safety of those as well as, you know, whether they work as well in kids as the regular dose does in teens or adults. So I think the benefit of rushing ahead here in Canada at this point without data is outweighed by the risk or the uncertainties of those factors and knowing which is the best dose to use. People may look at it differently in the U.S., but I think part of the problem in places where COVID is really spreading is that there's a lot of hesitancy around vaccination. So trying to push out vaccines to kids without the data being published and and available, I think it may only fuel that, those safety concerns or perception that, you know, the government's trying to push 
untested vaccines onto the population. So I think they need to be looking at trying to get more adults to get vaccinated, where we have lots of data on safety and effectiveness. The best thing for kids under 12 is basically to probably surround them, right? This is the idea of a ring of vaccination around them, right? Can you explain a little bit about that and probably how that's spelling into some of these vaccine mandates for people who are on the front lines, the education workers and healthcare workers and that sort of thing? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, you know, really the idea with vaccination is that, you know, these vaccines do decrease transmission of COVID from person to person, and they certainly prevent severe disease. And so by vaccinating as many people as possible, the people that are unvaccinated are fewer and further apart. And so if the virus gets in, it's harder for it to spread person to person because it might infect one person who's unvaccinated. But then if they're surrounded by vaccinated people, that virus can't spread further. And we do know that with COVID, a lot of the transmission that happens is actually from adults to children, different from many of the other viruses we're used to, like common colds and whatnot. And so vaccinating healthcare workers is absolutely critical to prevent healthcare workers from transmitting COVID to people who are sick in hospital with other conditions, vaccinating, you know, teachers, you know, daycare workers. If they do get COVID or get exposed to COVID, they're less likely to get infected, they're less contagious, and less likely to transmit to kids who can't get vaccinated yet. So vaccination, along with the other measures that we're used to, like frequent hand washing, keeping you know safe social distance or cohorting or however schools and daycares are managing that, those are all really key to help protect children. And then masks, you know, where appropriate, like indoors where you can't maintain distancing, at least in school age kids can be helpful as well. What's the advice that you would give parents right now? So, you know, I think first off, I think people can be reassured that in Canada right now, we have really high coverage and we're not seeing severe rates of COVID in kids, but I'd encourage them to, you know, make sure that everyone, all the adults in their social bubbles or that their kids are in contact with are vaccinated to the extent they can. And I know that that can be a challenging issue for family members who maybe have different views about vaccination. And then to continue to get their kids to wash their hands, to wear masks where it's required. And I think in public places where they can't maintain distancing, particularly kids, you know, over four or five should be encouraged to wear masks and, you know, to follow all the guidelines for their local schools and daycares to try to keep their kids as safe as possible. This is a bit of a left field switch, but I've been reading a lot about the learning gap from the past 18 months with some reports that children as young as one are behind on some cognitive abilities. As a pediatrician, what do you think parents should do to help kids who are behind, but also dealing with things like isolation and other mental health issues? Yeah, so that's a real concern for pediatricians in particular and why, you know, we've really been advocating to keep schools open and kids in classrooms, daycares open, you know, extracurricular activities are also really important for children's development. And, you know, that needs to be prioritized, in my view, over other aspects of keeping economies going, bars open, those sorts of things. That social interaction, the learning in the classroom, you know, gym class, free play, those are all really critical to kids' emotional, social, physical, intellectual development. And so we really do want to make schools as safe as possible and keep kids in school. Like we really should be aiming to have schools open the entire year this year and having kids in in in-person learning. And so I think we need to be looking at what will it take to do that for parents to feel safe, to send their kids to school, for kids to be safe in school, regardless of the kids' underlying health, because there are, you know, many kids that have chronic health conditions where they may be at higher risk of COVID. Look at what measures have we been using over the past, you know, 18 months that have worked well in school and what can we maybe ease? And I know that masking is one measure that a lot of people are in favor of dropping masks. And, you know, we need to look at, does that make sense in a particular school, in a particular community at a particular point in time with where COVID transmission is? So, I think that needs to be our first priority this fall. And then if vaccines are approved for use in kids and recommended, then we should be working to get kids vaccinated as quickly as possible. So whether that's through school-based programs, school-based vaccination programs like we have in grade seven or opening up public health clinics, making it easy and accessible for parents to get their kids vaccinated. Dr. Top, this has been fantastic for us. Is there anything that I didn't ask that you think that our listeners should know? Well, you know, I would just reiterate the message that anyone who hasn't had both doses of their COVID vaccine who is eligible, so everyone 12 and up, should try to book that appointment as soon as possible, speak to their doctor or pharmacist if they have any concerns about or questions about the vaccine. And that's really the best way to protect our kids at this point in time, as well as following all the other public health guidelines. 
Dr. Top, this has been fantastic for us. I really, really want to thank you for your time today. Well, thank you very much again for having me and that we'll have a chance to chat again. Dr. Karina Top is a pediatrician, vaccine researcher, and an associate professor at Dalhousie. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm your host, Raju Mudder. Our This Matters team is Adrian Chung, Brian Bradley, JP Fozo, Matt Hearn, Morgan Bockneck, Saba Etizaz, and Sean Pattenden. Our music is by so-called Mike DeAngelis and Sean Pattenden. We want to hear what stories matter to you. Please send us comments, questions, or ideas to thismatters at thestar.ca. Please consider supporting the journalism the Toronto Star Newsroom does at thestar.com slash subscribing matters. And don't forget to subscribe to This Matters on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Let's talk soon.